Hi everyone, and welcome back. I know it's been a while. Um, I've had a very busy summer, very busy spring, and I've been busy on my Instagram. I'm sure if, if you guys follow that, um, periodically Cody Wildlife, I've been very busy on there. Not so busy on the YouTube, but uh, this week we, we were off. We're in Cook's Forest this week. I've been taking a lot of photos up here, and we had some business to do up in Titusville, Pennsylvania which is Northwestern Pennsylvania. And it's actually the home of the modern petroleum industry. Think uh, drilling into rock to extract the oil, that kind of deal. They're really big on that up there. And we were heading back to Post Forest and we saw the sign for Pit Hole, Pennsylvania, a national historic registry, like blah, 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 whatever. And I was like, eh, why not? Everything that we had to do for today is done. Why not go check it out? We went there and we pulled into the parking lot. There was a big visitor center there. Uh, and just like what I found out on here is a ghost town. Sorry, that was Luna. Um, just like the, <laughs> are you tired? She had a busy day. Busy week. Busy week. Yeah. Um, just like the name, like online, like what it suggested that this was a ghost town. Now, um, the visitor center was a ghost town too. Um, it was completely closed. I don't know if it's like COVID related or maintenance related. There was plastic draped from the ceilings. The doors were locked. We couldn't get in. So I just wanted to take a moment and thank Atlas Obscura and Wikipedia for filling all, filling in all of the gaps that I should have got from that visitor center and letting us know what Pithole City is all about. Now, since we couldn't get into the museum, I'm going to insert right now photos I found from um, what people put online from the museum. There is a replica of the old town, which is really fascinating that someone like redid it in small scale, obviously. And uh, we we could see a newspaper from the window. We got a picture of that. We got a couple pictures of the outside. And we mostly just walked around what was the town taking photos. Now, let me just prepare you for what it looks like today. It is essentially a big field spotted with trees and they have different, like, it's literally where the roads used to be. Um, they're mowed and there's different signs telling you where the streets used to be. And there's no trace of anything. Now let's get into some of the history of it. And this is what it is. Oh, and I'm going to be looking at my notes for this because I don't want to be corrected on anything. What is that? What was called Pithole City is just a few miles away from Titusville on what was known as Holmden Farm. So there's only like a few people living there. They discovered oil and two speculators bought it and they made up these like different leases. There's about 500 leases for the oil and for businesses. And they sold all these leases. A whole bunch of people came in. Basically in two months, it went from like a few people to 2000 people. And then by the end of the year in December, there was 20,000 people on this like little farm area. And the city just kind of went crazy. It had like the third largest post office. It had a red light district. It had, which is of course, um, sex workers. And it had like uh, newspapers. It had 54 hotels and a lot of different things going on there. A lot of the houses that were built were kind of shanty houses though. Oil filled workers made a lot of money extracting the oil, putting it in barrels, and then they would have teamsters move the barrels to where they needed to go. But it was greed, believe it or not, that would bring this town down, which is I think the case with a lot of ghost towns. Just to get like a simple meal of like rough beef, bread and coffee was $4 in 1865, which is equivalent to uh, approximately $60 in today's money, $60 for a crappy meal, which is outrageous, like inflation, extortion, you know, even for today. So <laughs> the leases that were made were actually very predatory. And by the time that your lease ended, they put in the contract that the um, people that made the leases could keep everything that was on the lot after the lease ended. And they just kind of let the leases end. Buildings where the leases were made were like really crappy. They were kind of like shanty towns. And that's important later to know that there was no foundations to a lot of these buildings. Uh, people were also getting greedy with the money they were giving to the Teamsters to move the oil. 
And this person named uh, Samuel Van Schickel was angry with the price of transportation and actually invented oil pipelines to move the oil without the help of the Teamsters to the railroads. And this was very efficient. It moved about 81 barrels per hour through these pipelines, which is the equivalent of 300 Teamsters moving oil at a like 10 hour work day, every day a week. And obviously this angered a lot of people, the Teamsters that were making a lot of money doing this. The Teamsters would also light things on fire, the pipelines on fire. And a lot of the times whole like rows of houses would burn down along with a lot of the wells. By 1866, the price of oil plummeted and because there was just so much supply everywhere and the popular, basically it scared a lot of people away because people were getting burnt, they were losing money. So by 1866, the population of the town dropped down to 2000. And then by the end of the decade in 1870, there was 237 people in the town. By 1877, so just seven years later, they unincorporated the town. And by this point, we're getting almost up to modern day. The With everyone leaving, uh, nature basically took over the town, filling it with trees and uh, shrubs and meadows and different things. And someone came in and cleared it out, um, you know, sold the wood or whatever. And by that was in 1957. Um, it was bought, it was cleared, and it was sold back to the state. And the state actually made it a historic place. And they made, you know, the company museum that I didn't get to see. But, oh well, maybe next time. So I've lived in Pennsylvania for 28 years of my life. And I have never heard of Pithole City. But it just kind of adds to the layer of, like, obscureness of this place. We just happened to stumble upon it because we were on Route 36 in Pennsylvania. But it's not really a, like a loud place. It's not like a really well advertised place. It's definitely for somebody that wants to search out new things that are hidden. It's just right off the inter or right off the highway. Also, um, another thing about Pithole City um, that you might want to know about is that a lot of people do ghost hunting there. I wasn't really getting a ghosty vibe. And maybe next time, if we're in the area, I'll bring my like ghost detector and use Snapchat to find faces. That's always fun to do. And that might be a worthwhile thing if nature's not really your thing. But I hope you enjoyed this video. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe down below. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.